Welcome back aliens, my name is Arvind Reddy and let's continue this series on Spring Framework. Now till this point, we were able to achieve constructor and setter injection. It's time to talk about auto wiring. If you remember, when we talked about Spring Boot, we have done this in Spring Boot, we have done with auto wiring. But here also, without Spring Boot, let's try to explore it. And even before we do that, if you remember the Spring Boot videos, we have talked about different classes and interfaces because in this case, we only have laptop and dev developer. Uh, what we don't have is computer interface and desktop implementation of it. So let's create those and let's get forward. So what I will do is I will just go back here and say, let me just copy and paste or maybe use the same uh, laptop class, but this time we'll name it as desktop. And in desktop, we'll change certain things. I will just close this part. And in desktop, what I will do is when I say, uh, the constructor should be desktop created. And in the compiling, I will say compiling with or compiling in desktop. Okay, so these are the changes I've made. So in the laptop, it says compiling. I will just change it to compiling in laptop. Okay, uh, nothing fancy, just two different classes for the same concept. And when I say concept, these two are the, are the same type, right? So they both are computer. So what I will do is I will just extract the interface out of it extract the interface and we'll name this as computer. Uh, you can do this in different IDs, otherwise you can just simply create an interface and uh, have this method which we want. So if you go to computer, okay, void compile. So I wanted this method, I don't know what, I made some mistake while refactoring it, doesn't matter. So you can see we got the interface, uh, which is computer, and both these classes, the laptop and desktop, need to implement computer. So I will say implements, computer. If this is not happening by default in your ID, just try to manually type it. That should not be a problem. So we got the interface computer and then we got two implementation laptop and desktop. Okay. Just to go with this concept of coding for the interfaces. Now, since we have made those changes, I also want to change my developer. Now developers should not be dependent on a laptop, right? So developers should be dependent on a computer. So I will just make mention computer here. And uh, here also, I will just say this is a type. I will say comp even comp works. Okay, and then since we have made those changes, I have to also change the, in fact, I will just remove this particular constructor of parameters constructor of dev. And then we have to make two changes here. So when I say two changes, basically I'm, I want to change the getter setters, not for laptop this time, but for the computer. So I will just say generate uh, getter setters for the computer. I will say, okay. And now we got this two getter set, set I mean, we got these two methods. And then uh, here also in the build, I will say com.compile, not laptop.compile. Because as a developer, it doesn't matter which one you want to use, you, which one you are using basically, desktop or laptop, it should work, right? Uh, so we made few changes and will this work? That's a question, let's try. I have not made any changes in the uh, spring.xml file, so there's no configuration change. Let's see if this works and let's see what breaks when we do that. So yeah, we got the error. And if you see the error, it says error creating a bean def, of course, but why? Uh, it says cannot resolve to a constructor. Yeah, because we have removed the constructor. And I think in the XML file, we are still using this constructor. So what I will do is I will just remove everything since we know now how do we use it. So let me remove everything. Okay, so dev is basically empty now. And we got a laptop and the name for the ID for the laptop is lab one. What I want to do is I want to set some properties, right? So we have to basically set the property for uh, the two things. If, if you go to dev, I will just close this. We got two properties. We got comp and we got age. And maybe we don't even need age now. Let's only focus on comp, okay? Uh, of course, even if it is there, it should not make any difference, but I just want to keep the code a bit clean. So let's say we have only one dependency, which is of computer here. And if I go back to the XML file now, the dev needs to have a computer object, uh, the property. So I will say property. The name of the property is comp, but what should be the value? Of course, you cannot set a value is because this is not a primitive type. This is a reference type. So instead of value, it should be ref. The question is what it is referring to. Now, computer is an interface, right? So if you look at developer, it is dependent on a computer and computer itself is an interface. So I can't simply create an object of the interface, right? So I have to look for the implementation. And in this case, we got two implementation. We got desktop and we got laptop. But if you look at the bean creation, we are not creating the object for desktop. We are just creating the object for laptop. 
So basically in your container, when you run this, if it, is, it works, basically you will get two objects, one for your developer and one for your laptop. Okay, so we'll get these two objects. Now laptop itself is a computer, right? So can we just inject laptop in this developer when it is asking for uh, the comp? Yes, we can. So what we can simply do is we already have the object created for laptop, which is lab one. We can simply refer it here. Our job is done, right? So now if I rerun this, I hope this time it will work. And if not, let's debug it. But it works. You can see it says uh, working on the awesome project, laptop constructor, developer constructor, nowhere it's saying desktop constructor is because we have not created the bean here. And then it says compiling in laptop. So perfectly makes sense. But how about I want the object for uh, the desktop as well. So I can say bean id and i can say this is desk one and i will say class the class is com dot telesco dot uh, desktop and then in here okay we don't have any property there so now we got two objects and now if i run this look at the output basically you will also get the desktop constructor so it depends upon how many beans you mentioned here okay so now you even got the desktop object here okay so in total we got three objects but in developer which object we are using we are using the lab one again we have done this before we know how it is referring now but yeah if you want to say this is desk one that's your choice i mean you can mention what property you want do you want a desktop or do you want a laptop so you can change that in xml file and now it says compiling in desktop so the way you change that it will basically inject that particular object in the developer so it will inject this not this one Okay, things are working out. But what if I change the name here? So let's say uh, the ID for laptop is comp. Okay, and uh, will this work now? Of course, I have to change here as well. It will work because it will not be using comp, it will be using desk one. But what if I say comp? Will there be an issue if you have the same name? Uh, of course not. See, this comp is basically referring to the developer variable name, which is comp. And the second comp, this one is referring to the name of the bean or the ID of the bean, which is laptop bean, which is comp. And now if you run this, of course it will refer to the laptop. And you can see it says compiling a laptop. So our theory is working. But don't you think these two names are same? When you say name is comp, uh, the reference is also comp. What if I just skip this part? I mean, I, Spring is so awesome, right? Uh, if Spring is that awesome, I want Spring to actually connect that automatically. Uh, what we are doing is we are doing wiring and I want this wiring to be happening automatically. We have done that in Spring Boot. Here also, if I just comment it and if I run, uh, let's see if Spring is happy about it. No, no, Spring is not happy. Spring says it's still null, null point exception. It's because we are commenting it and we are assuming that it will do auto wiring, but Spring says, no, 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 I will not automatically do it. You have to tell me to do it. So what you can do is you can just in the bean tag, you can add one more attribute called auto wire. If you can see auto wire and you can say by name. Now what it will do is it will check. Okay. So in this particular developer class, we got only one property of comp, the computer property. The name is comp. What I will do is I will search for this name in this particular container. So in this container, do we have any object with comp? Yes. So we have this name here. So for this object, we have comp. For this object, it is desk one. So it will search, hey, do we have any object with name com? And yes, we do have it, uh, which is here. So it will try to connect it. And that's auto wiring. So if I run this, your spring is happy. It says compiling in laptop, he's happy. So basically that's how you use auto wire. But the problem is you can't use desktop here because you can't have two things with the same name. Example, if you, if you say both are comp, uh, there will be a confusion. And you can see a huge confusion. It says bean com is already used, right? So we cannot use the same ID two times. And that's why they're IDs, right? It should be unique. Uh, so we can have it comp and comp one. But let's say uh, if you want to use desktop as well, one thing you can do, you can remove the IDs or uh, you can change by saying, hey, I don't want to go by name. I want to go by type, even you can do that. So this time I'm not saying by name, I'm saying by type. So when you're searching for comp, it's basically searching for these two components here and says, okay, we got laptop and we got desktop, both are computer. What I will do time being is I will just comment this laptop and let's see if that works. So by type, it is searching for the type of a computer and desktop is a type of computer. But the problem starts when you have both. Now, if you see, we got two beans. Of course they have different name, but it doesn't matter. We are not even searching by name. We are searching, searching by type, the type, of computer 
and desktop and laptop both are computers. And now if you run this, your Spring is not happy. Spring says, hey, you know, I was searching for one, but I found two. There are two beans which are claiming that they are computers. I can't, I can't select one. It, I don't want to be biased. As a programmer, we can be biased, not the framework. So what we can say, okay, in case of confusion, give me the laptop. So I will say primary is equal to true. So you can use the primary attribute. So primary says, in terms of confusion, go with this particular bean, which is the laptop. So we are saying primary is true. And we have done this in the Spring Boot as well with the help of at primary annotation. But here I'm using the attribute and it says uh, compiling with laptop. Uh, so now I hope you are able to connect what we have done in the Spring Boot and what is happening here. Of course, XML is not something we love about, but I just wanted to explain you what is happening behind the scene. So now uh, this laptop object is becomes the primary one. We can do actually one more thing which, which we have not talked about, which is the app.java. In this, if you see, we are saying get bean. And when we say get bean, we are asking for the ID, right? I don't want to mention the ID. What if I mention the type of the object I want? I want the object of, or not computer, I want the object of dev. Now, will this work? So we are not searching by name here. We are searching by type. And when you do search by type, you don't even have to typecast it. So it reduces the number of words you write. And if you run this, it works. Right. So you have a choice. You can get, you can get bean by name or you can get bean by type. So in this case, uh, if you see the XML file, the name is not important. The type is important. So you're searching for the object by type. So that, that's how basically you work with the auto wire concept. So that's it from this video where we talked about the auto wiring. And I hope uh, the spring framework without spring boot makes sense now. Uh, enough of Spring Framework now. Let's focus on Spring Boot mode and then we'll move towards the project. So I hope you're enjoying this series where we are talking about Spring and Spring Boot uh, and it's time to focus more on Spring Boot. Bye-bye.